I am Tecumseh. So this is the man. Ece Homo. Tell him they'll have to lay down their arms. The governor welcomes you, Tecumseh. He asks in the name of peace that you and your warriors put aside your arms for this council. We will put our weapons aside only when your soldiers do. Chief Tecumseh, you come as a reasonable man who wishes to make peace. You and your warriors may keep your weapons. It is the wish of our great father in Washington that you sit with me and my men. My father? The great spirit is my father, and the earth is my mother. Upon her bosom I will recline. Very well. The American government is concerned that the situation between our peoples has become explosive. We must ask our Shawnee friend why he goes from tribe to tribe, stirring up anger against us. I will speak plainly. We have learned your ways, and we know that your treaties are for us to keep and you to break. Before you came, the land was free for all to use to make a home. It belonged not to one man, but to all of us. But then you attacked us, separately, and then you forced weak leaders to sell you the land you wanted, when it was not theirs to sell. Since you bring up the past, I must tell you that all the chiefs who signed our treaties gave us their solemn word the land was theirs. And what is the word of such men? No man owns the earth. Sell the land? What madness! Why not sell the rivers, or the sky, or the great sea? Land is not a thing to own any more than air or water. It is the life and the spirit of all creatures who live on it. I am Shawandase, people of the South Wind. And as Wishimanatu allows me to make the destiny of my people, I say, tear up your treaties and go back to your own country. Perhaps Tecumseh is joking. He knows very well that treaties lawfully made can never be rescinded. What we ask now is simple, that you cease your efforts to organize the tribes against us, and that you join us in making one last agreement, giving us title to the land of- One last agreement? Every treaty you have ever made with the Red Man since coming upon this land you promised was to be the last. And each time you invaded us again, you ask us to have confidence in your promises. When Jesus Christ came upon the earth, you killed him, the son of your own God. And only after he was dead did you worship him and start killing those who would not. Who could trust the word of such people? Tecumseh is wrong, most of all about our treaties. We have dealt fairly and justly with the Indian people, Naga. and the fact is this was always Miami land Naga. until the Shawnee invaded them and stole it. This man is a liar! I see no way to continue. Conor! This council is adjourned. Let us all retire peaceably. I 
appreciate your willingness to meet again. This is how men who have differences should talk. Privately. Quietly. Too much show can make a man proud, dull his judgment. Hmm. It's good to use this in a peaceful way. Yesterday, it came near to splitting my skull. I regret that. A man must learn to control his temper, or like a wild horse, it will run with him. Tecumseh. You could become the greatest man in the history of your race. We are building a new world here, and you should be part of it. You should join us. Let us be partners. And you lead your people into the American way of life. I've seen the way of life you Americans gave. In the town of Black Hoof, it is the way of death. And I would rather die. Then we have nothing more to discuss. There will be war. Brothers and sisters of the great Santee Nation, hear me! I am Tecumseh, born Shawandase, born under that shooting star your fathers will remember. Now war chief of all tribes north of the Shawanawisipe. I come to warn you in this time of greatest danger. At this moment, the Americans are plowing up the graves of my ancestors. Tomorrow, they will do the same to yours. We must unite. Where today are the Mohegan, the Pequot, the Narragansett, the Tuscarora? Dead from wars with white men, dead from disease, drunkenness, and starvation. Look at the country that they loved, once so beautiful, and what do you see? Stumps. All the red nations want peace. But where the white men are, there can be no peace, except under the bosom of Mother Earth. Suggesting we strike Prophet Town now. I mean, there could be repercussions. If Tecumseh has time to unite the tribes and attack us, there'll be real repercussions. I'll advise the Secretary of War of the reasons for my action. Post the letter as we march. Once I've destroyed Prophet Town, they'll forget my transgression. Manitou has just shown me what we must do. Open Door's attempt to surprise and assassinate Harrison was disastrous. It gave Harrison the excuse to attack, destroy, and slaughter our people. him when I had the chance. They've stolen everything from us. Our homes, our religion, our children. All they have left us with is hate. From now on, it will be a war of vengeance. I will fight the long knives to my death. I swear it. I'm the master of life. Brother. Get up! <laughs> what have they told you? The truth. The war chiefs, they forced me to do it. That's a lie! They made me do it! They made me do it! We 
Eugene Manadou told me to kill Harrison. I just followed his order. But the long knives were waiting. Harrison knew. You betrayed me! You betrayed yourself! You betrayed the people! Courage, brothers! One off! The burning of Prophet Town destroyed Tecumseh's hope of unifying the tribes. Still, he fought with the British against the Americans in the War of 1812. But finally, the British retreated into Canada, leaving Tecumseh alone to face Harrison. As you were, gentlemen. Will you join us, Governor? I believe I will, Mr. Barron. Death to the slippery red bugger. <laughs> Which red bugger do you mean, Colonel Johnson? Red coat or red skin? <laughs> I mean Tecumseh. I mean to take a patch of his hide, God willing. And so does every man here. That there Shawnee better have a lot of skin. No, sir. If he's as big as all the talk, he should have enough hide to go around. Hmm. Here he's almost a giant. Size don't count. Catch a bobcat by the privates. The harder you squeeze, the longer his claws get. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to his legend, gentlemen, he's not all that big. Although when he springs up before you with his tomahawk, he does seem rather... Rather imposing. Take it from one who knows. But then as the maxim goes, the greater the enemy, the greater the victory. <laughs>